This is a video showing what's new in NoteTaker HD version 6.8. If you're not familiar with NoteTaker HD, please watch the overview video first, then watch this later. The first new feature we'll talk about is Auto Return. Auto Advance works like it has before. Auto Advance, where you just write and continue writing as you're writing. As soon as you come down right here, that puts a line right next to what you're writing before. However, with auto return, when you get near the end, once you see the little brown dots, if you write in, if you've written inside of where the right the the brown dots are, which corresponds to the right margin. We have a new right margin setting. Then you'll see the gray area has a return on it. This corresponds to the left margin. To the next line. You can still press return manually if you want. So that's how you have auto return. The right margin can be moved wherever you want to make it work better so that you have just the right amount of space when you're moving to the right to be able to have the return uh, work when you're writing on it. So that if you write in here, the next thing corresponds right there. So that's auto return. You can turn it off with an app setting if you want. The right margin starts out by default where it used to be, which is at about 90% of the width of the page. The distance that return moves you down is the same as it was, but you can change that with the zoom tool to set the return spacing. So now instead of 150, which would be the narrow line, let me uh, move it up to, uh, let's say, 300. I'm just using the pinch gesture here, and you can do a little slower and it moves slower. There's 300. Okay. Now, if I put like one, two, three, you see that it's now double spacing. And I can always go back and set it back. Let's set it back at 150. This is a value that stays with a page. If you want to be able to change it for uh, all your documents, you can always uh, create a template page and start a template doc and start with that. Now, you might notice that the ink is smoother than it used to be. It uses curves now rather than just line segments to be able to show what you're doing. And that should look much better. Version 6.8 makes better use of the second CPU on the Apple iPad 2 and later machines. You'll find fewer lost pen movements during auto advance and during auto return. Another feature is resizing and rotating ink. You can resize it and make it bigger or smaller by dragging these handles and you see this little circle? If you turn on it, it rotates in 15 degree increments. If you pull out from that and then rotate, it's continuous. So you can make something on an angle and size it. And this little handle over here lets you reposition as you see fit. Then you just confirm. You can also undo it and redo it. Another new feature is support for languages that are written from right to left, such as Hebrew and Arabic. You have to enable this with an app setting, and then you can use one of the zoom tools to set the writing direction. So now when I hit the return key, it brings me to the right margin. And if I write, This is supposed to be Apple in Arabic and in Hebrew. 
you see how Auto Advance now works from right to left instead of from left to right. The Advance button now goes the other direction. And Auto Return works the other direction too. If you want to use right to left support, please read the help section about it carefully, especially if you're writing in Arabic. Another new set of features are for the external video, the VGA adapter. So let's turn on Apple TV, which I happen to have on in the other room. And now you see there's the external video and we have an optional pointer, VGA pointer, that you can turn on and off with a hide and show VGA pointer tool. And you can push it, move it, and whatever you see here is also shown on the screen of the external monitor. You can actually touch it below. It's sensitive a little further below so you can actually see where you're pointing it. Another feature that we've added is called VGA memory. Notice I've set it here. In the older versions, each page had its own setting for the external video position and cropping. Now if you turn on the VGA memory and turn it to per dock instead of per page, when you go to another page, as you see, it's the same as it was in the page you last set it at. That lets you keep it continuous from one to another. People will find both of them useful. This has been uh, a response to request from users. Let me show you some of the app settings. We now have a new setting for default annotation dock line spacing for return. This lets you set the line spacing used when you are on top of a, um, a PDF page. And uh, previously it had set it to the same as I think it was narrow, uh, as narrow line. Now this lets you set the spacing to be whatever you want so you can line it up exactly with certain forms. You can turn on and off automatic return if you want to if you find that to be a problem, you want to return to the way that it used to be in older versions. Here you can set, um, let's say, the right to left auto advance enabled. You can turn that on and off. When you turn that on, which you have to do if you want to have right to left support, that will automatically switch you into right to left mode. And then you can use that zoom tool to switch between left to right and right to left. And here's the setting that you should look at if you're uh, using Arabic languages, uh, languages like Arabic that uh, use Arabic characters and similar ones. The external video has different pointer styles, so you can switch instead of having the black arrow, you can have a white, red, or green one. And the external video memory. There's a new setting called Annotation Docs Background Display. It lets you show the PDF in the background just like it used to, or if you have image, if you have PDFs that are really slow to display so that zooming in and out becomes a problem, you can say, well, just use that snapshot image that it uh, uses during zoom. Um, keep that and don't re-render each time you change the size. And that for certain PDFs, if you're stressing the runtime memory, such as by having a lot of high-res images or scans or lots of fonts while you're zooming um, and you're running 1080p uh, on an external monitor at the same time, that can cut down the memory usage and make it less likely that it might crash from running out of memory. In addition, there's a new launch image that shows parts of the screen just as Apple recommends. This will make it seem faster when you're starting up the app. So these are the major additions in NoTaker HD 6.8. I hope you like them.